Hey guys, how's it going? I had seen a video similar to this on YouTube. I can't remember the YouTube channel that did it, but basically what he did is he took a group of YouTubers, uh, Diesel Creek, Watch West Work, the Wyatt and his dad over there at the Restored YouTube channel. I'm subscribed to all these channels, by the way. There was one more that I can't think of what his name was. I've never, I think I've seen him before, but I just can't put a name on him. Uh, what he did is he brought all of them together and he had all of them film uh, just kind of videos on showing how to get things running, how to get an old car, an old truck running that you come across at a parts yard or someone brings in and they need help working on it. So I thought, you know, how cool would it be to do something similar? involving the old garden tractors, kind of like what I'm working on. Um, there are... I figured I'd go over them and I would give some tips and advice and tricks that you want to use when you're working on one of these, kind of like what they gave when they were working on those old cars. I had this idea and then somebody also, I believe it was Iron Duke, I don't know, I know you have numbers in your name. I can't remember the numbers in your name, but I know your name is Iron Duke. Actually, <laughs> I can look it up right now and find out what your name is. Let me take a look here real quick and see if I can figure what your name is. I think it actually might have been on here it is, Iron Duke 502. Hey John, now that we are getting closer to spring, you could possibly cover what you need to do to bring small engine stuff back to life after sitting idle for a while. For instance, I tried to start my MTD garden tractor and the starter solenoid would only click instead of cranking the engine when I turned the key switch. For me, I usually run some Berryman B12 through my gasoline to dissolve any varnish buildup in the fuel system and disperse moisture in the fuel system. I hope this helps you out, John. Never thought about doing that, actually. But uh, that's who suggested it. So I thought, you know, I had the idea going through my head to do that, so I'm going to go on ahead and make this video. Some of the things to watch out for on these older tractors and uh, Lowe's mowers, too, that you run across, Craftsman's, um, you want to go over it real good. You want to just you want to go over it. And you want to make sure while you're there looking at it at whoever you're buying it from his house. I've gotten into a really bad habit when it comes to buying stuff to just saying, "Oh yeah, it looks fine," bringing it home and just going over it when I get home, pulling the camera out. I've gotten into a really bad habit of doing that. I really need to stop doing that. Um, some of the things you want to watch out for on these small engines, you want to watch out for spark, fuel, and compression. You need all three of those in order to be able to get the engine running. Um, you can use starting fluid if you, your fuel system is dirty. The carburetor is the thing up here in the front where your fuel line goes up into. That does the air-fuel mix in the there's little chambers in there. It's what controls the air fuel mix. It mixes the fuel with the air. And then that goes into the combustion chamber in the engine. And it goes up into the combustion chamber where the piston goes up and down. And the spark plug in there ignites it, causing it to go down. The piston is going, it's just about starting to go down once that plug fires. When that plug fires, that fuel that's in there, um, blows up, I want to say explodes, but I don't want to say explodes at the same time. Pushing the piston down, goes back up, and then it pushes the exhaust gases out as it's coming up, and then as it goes down, it's pulling more fuel in. That's the way a four-stroke engine works. So that's what you need in order to work on a four-stroke engine. Uh, two-stroke engines are similar. I have not really ever messed with two, I've messed with two stroke engines but I really can't think of them on the top of off the top of my head. 
I do know how the four-stroke engines are though. Uh, another thing that you want to make sure of is if your fuel tank, this is my fuel tank right here, if your fuel tank is not <clears throat> up higher than the carb, there will not be gravity. Gravity will push the fuel to the carb, into the carb, it'll fill your float bowl, and then the engine will run. If your fuel tank is down below the carb, you'll want to have a fuel pump. You'll want to make sure your fuel pump is good. There are mechanical pumps as well as pulse pumps. The pulse pumps, there is a little diaphragm inside of them. The crankcase pressure that comes from the engine expands it, makes it move, drawing in fuel. And there's little there's little valves inside of there out of that little what's that called again? That little diaphragm. It's got little valves in it that open and close. Just little paper valves. Mechanical pumps. There's a little arm that goes into the engine block and it rides on the camshaft and that pushes it open and close. When it goes down, it's drawing fuel in. When it pushes the pump up, it is pushing fuel into the, the carb. There is check valves in that also, same with the pulse pump. One of the other things to watch out for is the starter solenoid. The starter solenoid is the positive wire from the battery if you have a positive, if you have a negative ground. The positive lead goes from the battery to the, the uh, stator. There's two terminals on the stator, three terminals actually, sometimes there's four. Uh, the two terminals right there, the bigger terminals, one goes from the battery. The other one goes to the starter. It does not matter which one does what. There's a thinner one. That one, there's a wire that goes from the key switch to. That is what engages the solenoid and causes it to uh, push out the little magnet and start spinning over the engine, letting current pass through it. <clears throat> if your engine is not cranking, your solenoid is possibly bad. You could have a dead battery. Uh, maybe your solent, maybe your starter's no good, maybe your starter's loose. Um, I actually have a couple solenoids that are taken apart. Maybe I'll grab them later and show you guys how they work. Uh, let's see, we've covered fuel system, we have covered the solenoid. Another thing you want to do when you first bring it home or even before you get it, open the fuel tank and smell it. Make sure that if the gas smells rancid, drain it. Uh, clean the tank out real good. Put fresh gas in it. And then after you do that, if you have a fuel filter, put a fuel filter in your line. If you get a fuel shut off, put a fuel shut off in your line. And then every time you shut off your engine, if you have a gravity feed system, just turn your valve off. That way fuel doesn't go into the carb. Sometimes it does leak past the seat, causing it to fill. Sometimes it will fill your combustion chamber full of gas, and that gas will go down into your oil, and then you'll have your oil thinned and you'll have to replace your oil. Another thing you do want to make sure your engine has when you first get it is you want to check and make sure you have enough oil. There is a dipstick in there. There are marks on the dipstick, F and E. E is empty, F is full. If it's over full, it's not going to hurt anything as long as it's not up all the way to all the way up the dipstick. Uh, if it's all the way up the dipstick, you're going to have to drain some oil out of it because the piston needs to be able to go down and come back up. If it can't go down, it's either going to start blowing it out the breather or it's going to blow your your uh, dipstick out if it just pops in there with a little seal causing oil to go everywhere. So you're going to want to keep your oil low, not low, but you're going to keep it on the full mark. There are two types of, actually, <clears throat> there are a few types of starters. One of them is a pull start. One of them is a generator start. And there's a little starter with a gear. I think the most common one that you'll see nowadays is the gear. The charging system on these is pretty simple. On this one, it's got a generator. There's a terminal on the generator that says F. 
the F terminal goes to the regulator and then the regulator regulates it to 12 volts and sends it to the battery. Some engines, there is a stator underneath of your flywheel. There will be a little regulator. Sometimes they're mounted here, sometimes they're mounted on the engine, other times they're hidden. There's two wires that come off of that regulator or solenoid stator. They are alternating current. I don't think it matters if you flip the wires around on the regulator. It might matter, it might not matter. Um, but those two wires go to the regulator. And then there's a wire that comes off of the middle. That middle wire goes to the battery. That is what charges your battery. It either goes to the, I think it does go to the battery. And that's what charges your battery. Um, what else? Is there anything else that I am missing? One thing you want to do, you must do, go over your tractor. There are grease fittings such as this one right here and there are a few others on this tractor. Make sure your grease fittings are greased. Uh, if your tractor steers hard, that'll help it steer better. Uh, sometimes they tend to get harder to steer and people give up on them and that's one of the reasons they'll park them. So just go over them with a grease gun and just grease the front spindles, grease the grease your uh, gearbox for the steering if you have a steer gearing box gearbox. Sometimes there's a rack and pinion set up. Um, that's really not that important for this video, so I'm not going to go over them. Um, I think that is just about it for everything that needs to be gone over on a small engine such as this when it comes to getting it running. I have a tractor sitting in there that is taken apart. We can go over and I can show you guys other things to look for on that one. So this right here is your carburetor. This is what I was talking about. This is what adjusts your air fuel mix. This right here is your choke. This right here controls how much air goes into the cylinder as well as fuel. This down here is your fuel pump. This right here is your crankcase breather. Uh, this lets pressure out of the crankcase. That way it doesn't blow your oil dipstick out. These right here are your points. The points like to be set at 20 thousandths. Uh, that is around where they want to be. If they're not at 20 thousandths, the engine will tend to, it'll tend to not really run too good. Uh, there are some engines that do have a solid state ignition or a magneto. They don't use points anymore. As far as I'm aware on the newer riding lawnmowers that they sell at Lowe's, as well as some of the newer garden tractors that they have and some of the older garden tractors that they have too they do not have the points and condenser they just have the mag or the uh, solid state ignition underneath the flywheel this right here is your underneath the flywheel on top of the flywheel this right here is your spark plug spark plug wire that back here is your coil this right here is your oil dipstick sometimes they just pop out of there like that other times you have to thread them here's your oil as you can see F and L, it is actually full and low. Not F, some of them have E, some of them have F, L. Now you can see my oil is at the full mark. Coming back here, battery. Batteries tend to want to be at 12 volts. Just take a voltmeter and check your battery. Make sure your battery is at 12 volts. That right there is the solenoid. Uh, we come back here, actually, well, nah. Most of them have them in different positions. Now nah, I'll show you. This right here is choke, or this right here is throttle. This is throttle right here. It says throttle fast, slow. When you're starting an engine, do not throttle it up all the way and pull the choke and choke it. Do not do that. When you're going to start an engine that is bad for your engine, you will blow a head gasket. 
Uh, it's not good for an engine at all, especially if it's cold and especially if it's been sitting for a long time like this. I will repeat it again. Do not throttle an engine all the way up and choke it. Just do not throttle an engine up all the way at all to start it. That is the dumbest thing I have ever seen people do. It really pisses me off when I see people do that. They need to tell people not to do that. And of course, all these new riding lawnmowers that I see nowadays, the choke is all the way up here. I don't know why. If you have one like that, start it, and as soon as it starts, throttle it down. That is the best way to do it. Throttle it all the way down and let it warm up. This is your choke. Sometimes the choke is a pull button like this, other times it's a slide like this. This right here isn't really necessary, but this is headlights and this is my PTO. Um, not all of them are the same. I'd go over everything on this tractor, but it, not really all of them are the same. So therefore there's really no reason to. Key switch. Some key switches have three positions, some of them have four. This is a three position. The first position right there is off, the second position is on, the third position is start. When you're starting your engine, as soon as you hear the engine start, let go of the key. Do not keep on turning it. I have watched people turn the key. They leave the key turned to the start position while the engine is running. As soon as you hear the engine start, let go of that key. That will that'll destroy your starter. It'll destroy the gear that turns over the engine. It can do damage to your flywheel as well. Do not do that. <laughs> I try not to sound negative, but I mean, I've seen it done, and I always yell at every. I always yell at my screen when I see it done. Tires. Let's go over tires. Your valve stem. This is your valve stem right here. Tires tend to be at 10, front tires tend to want to be at 10 PSI, 5 PSI sometimes. Uh, I don't really fill them that full. Uh, the rear, you don't really want to fill them that full because you got to keep in mind these tractors don't have suspension. The only suspension that you get is in your tires and if your seat has springs. If you have lower PSI in your tires, they'll tend to the they'll tend to go over things a little bit better and not really be able to notice them. If your tires are full at 100 PSI, that's bad first off. And second off, if they're full like that and they're really hard, any bump you go over or any branch you go over, you'll notice it. Where if your tires are at a lower RP or lower PSI, if you go over a branch or something like that and it just absorbs the absorbs it and the tire um, indents a little bit, you're not really going to notice it. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I can think of that I want, I need to show you guys, or have I pretty much shown you everything? I think I have pretty much shown you everything. <clears throat> Underneath the engine, there is an oil drain. This has an automotive style oil pan on the bottom of it. This is a Kohler K-Series. The older Kohler K-Series have that. Some engines, the oil pan is just flat. Some of them, like Briggs and Tecumseh, there's a drain that comes out the side of the block. Sometimes there's a drain that goes out the bottom of the block. All you gotta do is just look at it, find out where your oil drain is. Mine is on the bottom of this block. I wish that I had a Kohler K-Series out of a tractor that I could show you guys this on, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, you just look at it, find out where your oil drain is, and just drain the oil. And then after you drain the oil out of it, let it sit overnight just to get all the oil out of the engine. One thing I like to do is I like to run the engines first and then shut them off once they're warm. Then once they're warm, I'll take the oil pan out, or I'll take the uh, oil drain out, and I'll just drain the oil out of them while it's warm and wants to move easy. So there you go. I hope this video helps you guys out. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know.
I like making these videos for you guys. I'll probably end up making a video here soon on how to get push mowers and other stuff like that running. Although I think this video pretty well covered the push mowers and everything uh, when it comes to what all you need. Push mowers are the same there when it comes to the engine. Push mowers are the same. Uh, rototillers are the same. Leaf blowers are the same unless it's two stroke. Uh, some leaf blowers are the same depending on two stroke or four stroke. Weed eaters are the same. Two stroke and four stroke it really doesn't matter. The only thing about two stroke is you have to mix fuel in or you have to mix oil under your fuel as well as the only the piston goes up one two one two one two every time the piston goes up to the top of the bore it, the spark plug sparks and the piston goes back down I do not exactly know the way the two I don't really I don't mess with two strokes I really don't have that much knowledge on two strokes I only really work on four stroke engines so I I'm not really one to ask when it comes to two strokes maybe I'll make a video on two strokes one day but they're pretty simple all they need is fuel and compression as well they need lower they need lower compression but it's usually easy to tell if an engine has compression if you're turning it over and it gets harder to move that mean that's most of the time means that you've got compression uh, if it just moves around you can spin the engine around for full rotations and you haven't and it hasn't tried to fight you back yet then you have no compression sometimes the cause of compression loss is rings or one of your valves is potentially stuck right here is the intake valve right here is the exhaust valve sometimes the valves get carboned up sometimes after an engine sets for a long period of time rust will tend to develop in underneath the valves and they just don't seat as well as they used to that's another thing to look out for as well is just sometimes spinning an engine over will help it clear that up and then once you've spun it over quite a bit once you've spun it over a little bit and got the oil flowing around in it uh, you can dump a little bit of gas in the cylinder I recommend two-stroke fuel because there's oil mixed in with the two-stroke with the gas just dump that in there that'll give the cylinder some lubrication as well as the rings and that lubrication now nah, I really won't help the valves any but just stick it in there and crank the engine over if it starts well that's good that means it'll run if it doesn't start and it just starts blowing gas out the muffler or gas starts coming out of the carb when there's no gas in the tank well then you might need to you might not have spark or you might want to check your valves um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else another thing you want to do is take all the tins when you get something that's been sitting for a while this tractor has been sitting in a barn for about 20 years when you first get something that's been sitting for a long period of time go over it and take all the tins off of it and make sure there's no mouse nests in it for example I found some nuts in the air filter housing of this tractor I haven't found any mouse house in it yet but that is one thing you want to look for mice do get into these things and they will tear them up they will chew your wiring out of it they will shit everywhere they'll piss everywhere and it'll start to rust out your frame it'll rust out your fender pan it'll rust out your battery tray it'll rust just about anything out they are disgusting little creatures and you know what's the sad part they do not care that is actually another thing you do want to look over is your wiring if the wiring in the tractor looks good then you're fine if you see bare wires you're going to want to stop and look for a wiring diagram most tractors you can find a wiring diagram for I'm not sure about the ones that come from Lowe's but most garden tractors like this you can find a wiring diagram for um, if your tractor does not come with an air filter assembly uh, do not run it very long you can run it you can get it going like that just to make sure it runs 
But don't go outside and work it and run it like that because if dirt gets into your carb and goes up into your cylinder, it's going to score your, it's going to score out that bore and it's going to ruin that bore and you're going to have to bore your engine out as well as get new rings. Um, that dirt will act like sandpaper, it'll act like grit. I think I have just about covered everything that I need to cover, everything that I can think of that I need to cover for this video. I hope this video helps you guys out. Any further questions, feel free to let me know. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. If you have any questions or if you're having trouble getting something running, leave a comment down in the comment section below. Just let me know. I'll get back with you and I'll see if I can help you out with whatever you're working on. I like working on this stuff. I like it when people send me a message and tell me, hey, I need your, can you give me some insight on this? I'm new to this. I like it when new people get into this hobby. This is a really fun hobby. It's a very expensive hobby, but it's a really fun hobby to get into. I like it a lot. You meet a lot of nice people doing this. Same with working on old cars. I want to thank what's his name for the idea. I'll leave a link to his that video that he made in the description below. I really want to thank him for the idea as well as Iron Duke 506. Um, I think this is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, if you like what you see on the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you guys a thing. It tells YouTube that I do a good job at making my videos. It tells me that you guys like what you see and you want to see more. Uh, it also tells people watching, checking out this channel that I'm a good guy and I sort of know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, you like watching my videos and you want YouTube to quit censoring me and hiding my videos. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. If I think of something to go over before I get this video uploaded, I will add it into this video. If I don't, this is going to be it. And uh, yeah, take care.